Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners. So we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. On today's program, you will hear a report about Indonesian batik from Mario Ritter Jr. Later, Jill Robbins answers a question from an English learner. We close with an American story. But first, Anna Mateo and I tell you about a new character on Sesame Street. The children's television series Sesame Street is getting ready to welcome a new friend. Ji Young is joining the neighborhood filled with puppets known as Muppets. She will be the first Asian American Muppet on Sesame Street. The program has been broadcast for 52 seasons. Reporters with the Associated Press recently got to know Ji Young and her story. Ji Young is seven years old. She is Korean American. She has two favorite activities playing her musical instrument, an electric guitar, and going skateboarding. She explained the meaning of her Korean name this way. Ji means like smart or wise. And Young means like brave or courageous and strong, Ji Young said. But we were looking it up and guess what? Ji also means sesame. Sesame is a kind of small seed. It is also, of course, in the name of the program. Ji Young will officially be introduced in See Us Coming Together, a Sesame Street special. The television special will be broadcast on HBO Max on November 25th. That is the same day as the American Thanksgiving holiday. It will also be available on Sesame Street social media services and local public television stations in the U.S. Simu Liu, Padma Lakshmi, and Naomi Osaka are among the famous people appearing in the special. Some of Ji Young's personality comes from her puppeteer, the human behind her performance. Her puppeteer is Kathleen Kim, who is also Korean-American. She is 41 years old. She got into puppetry when she was in her 30s. In 2014, she was accepted into a Sesame Street workshop. The next year, she became part of the team. Being a puppeteer on the show was a dream come true for her. And helping shape a new Muppet is extraordinary. I feel like I have a lot of weight that maybe I'm putting on myself to teach these lessons and to be this representative that I did not have as a kid, Kim said. Ji Young's appearance is the result of many discussions following the events of 2020. Among them was a rise in reports of anti-Asian hate crimes. Those working for Sesame Street thought about how the show could meet the moment, said Kay Wilson Stallings. She is executive vice president of creative and production for Sesame Workshop the nonprofit organization behind Sesame Street. Sesame Workshop established two task forces, one to look at its content and another to look at its own diversity. What developed was Coming Together, a major project centered on how to talk to children about race, ethnicity, and culture. One result was eight-year-old Tamir. 
While he was not the show's first black Muppet, he was one of the first to talk about subjects like racism. These newer Muppets, their personalities, and their looks were created in just a few months. The process normally takes at least several years. Kim said it was important to her that Ji Young not be only Pan Asian. In other words, she wanted Ji Young to be identified as Korean American and not an Asian puppet that could be from anywhere. Because that is something that all Asian Americans have experienced, Kim said. So it was very important that she was specifically Korean American, not just like generically Korean, but she was born here. One thing Ji Young will help teach children is how to be a good upstander. Sesame Street first used the term on its The Power of We TV special last year. That show also included the Muppet Tamir. Stallings said, Being an upstander means you point out things that are wrong or something that someone does or says that is based on their negative attitude toward the person because of their race or culture. In See Us Coming Together, Sesame Street is preparing for Neighbor Day, when everyone shares food, music, or dance from their culture. Ji Young gets her feelings hurt after a child tells her to go back home. But Ji Young feels better after other Asian Americans, stars appearing on the program, and friends like Elmo. Tell her that she belongs as much as anyone else. Ji Young will appear throughout the show's 53rd season next year, Stallings said. She will not be used only for subjects related to race. Vanessa Leung is co executive director of Coalition for Asian American Children and Families. The organization was not involved in Ji Young's creation. But in the past, it has helped develop anti racism material for Sesame Workshop. Young said she is pleased about Ji Young's inclusion on Sesame Street. Young added that the program helps develop an early understanding of the diversity of our community, the beauty in the diversity of our community. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Ana Mateo. Batik is a traditional Indonesian coloring method used to make designs and drawings, usually on cloth and finished textiles. Batik makers use dyes, colors added to cloth and other materials, to create the colorful designs. In central Indonesia, many batik makers are using natural dyes instead of manufactured ones. The natural dyes used come from mangrove forests that grow along the coast. The trees grow in salty water on a complex system of tall roots. Mangrove forests serve an important purpose. They provide a barrier against destructive ocean waves called tsunamis. They also are important to water life like fish and crabs. And the forests are more effective in capturing carbon dioxide gas, a gas linked to climate change, than rainforests or similar environments. Erwin Ardley is a mangrove ecologist at Indonesia's Genderal Soderman University. He says the natural dyes may not be as bright as manufactured ones, but they are better for the environment. 
Ardley said, We've seen the interest for natural dyes increasing, and especially for middle to upper class people. They seem proud to wear clothes using these natural dyes rather than synthetic ones. Eating Budiarty, who owns an art gallery that shows batik designs, agreed with Ardley. Budiarty added that objects with natural dyes can cost two or three times more than the synthetic ones. Forty-eight-year-old Sodikin is a batik maker. He uses only one name. Over the past four years, he and his group of batik makers have changed from using chemical materials for dyes to mangrove-based products. The change has reduced their costs and helped the environment. Harvesting involves gathering a handful of what looks like string beans, seeds within a covering. Sodikin then takes the mangrove fruit home to make natural dye from them. We use natural materials so as to preserve the mangrove forest at the same time, Sodikin said as he processed dried fruits before boiling them to extract the color for use as a dye. We do not cut down the trees, he added, and we only take fruits or leaves that have fallen. I'm Mario Ritter, Jr. Hello, this week on Ask a Teacher, we answer a question from UU in Somalia. What are the differences between any longer, any more, and no longer? Dear UU, thank you for writing to us. These three expressions are similar, so they may cause some misunderstandings among learners. Although the three expressions have the same meaning, you should be careful how you use them. They must be used in different kinds of statements or questions. Let us look at them more closely. Any longer is an adverb, that is, it gives us more information about the action in a statement or question. It means that something that was once true or possible is not now true or possible. Here is an example. Because of the coronavirus, we can't sit close together in the movies any longer. Note that this sentence has a negative, can't. You will only find this expression in questions or statements with a negative. Here is a question using any longer. Don't is the negative. Don't you go to that store any longer? Any more is an adverb when written as one word, meaning that something that was once true is not true. For example, Chris and Sandy are not dating anymore. When people write any more as two words, it describes an amount of something. Here is an example. Do we have any more ice cream? If you are unsure, look for the negative and the location of any more. Is it at the end? Here is the same question with the adverb any more. Don't we have ice cream any more? This question has a negative not, and any more is at the end. Finally, the expression no longer appears in statements or questions without other negative words. The word no is a negative already. Here is one example. I will no longer eat pizza before going to bed. 
It gives me bad dreams. Note that no longer can appear in the middle of a sentence. I hope this answers your question, Yu Yu, so you will no longer have problems with these three expressions. What question do you have about American English? Send us an email at learningenglish at voanews.com. And that's Ask a Teacher. I'm Jill Robin. Two Thanksgiving Day Gentlemen There is one day that is ours. There is one day when all Americans go back to the old home and eat a big dinner. Bless the day. The President gives it to us every year. Sometimes he talks about the people who had the first Thanksgiving. They were the Puritans. They were some people who landed on our Atlantic shore. We really don't remember much about them. But those people ate a large bird called turkey on the first Thanksgiving day. So we have turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, if we have enough money to buy a turkey. That is a tradition. Yes, Thanksgiving Day is the one day of the year that is purely American. And now here is the story to prove to you that we have old traditions in this new country. They are growing older more quickly than traditions in old countries. That is because we are so young and full of life. We do everything quickly. Stuffy Pete sat down on a seat in the New York City park named Union Square. It was the third seat to the right as you enter Union Square from the east. Every Thanksgiving day for nine years, he had sat down there at one in the afternoon. Every time things had happened to him. They were wonderful things. They made his heart feel full of joy. And they filled another part of him, too. They filled the part below his heart. On those other Thanksgiving days, he had been hungry. It is a strange thing. There are rich people who wish to help the poor, but many of them seem to think that the poor are hungry only on Thanksgiving Day. But today, Pete was not hungry. He had come from a dinner so big that he had almost no power to move. His light green eyes looked out from a gray face on which there was still a little food. His breath was short. His body had suddenly become too big for his clothes. It seemed ready to break out of them. They were torn. You could see his skin through a hole in the front of his shirt. But the cold wind with snow in it felt pleasantly cool to him, for Stuffy Pete was overheated with the warmth of all he had had to eat. The dinner had been much too big. It seemed to him that his dinner had included all the turkey and all the other food in the whole world. So he sat, very, very full. He looked out at the world without interest, as if it could never offer him anything more. The dinner had not been expected. He had been passing a large house near the beginning of that great broad street called Fifth Avenue. It was the home of two ladies of an old family. These two old ladies had a deep love of traditions. There were certain things they always did. On Thanksgiving Day at noon, they always sent a servant to stand at the door. There he waited for the first hungry person to walk by. The servant had orders to bring that person into the house and feed him until he could eat no more. Stuffy Pete happened to pass by on his way to the park. The servant had gathered him in. Tradition had been followed. Stuffy Pete sat in the park, looking straight before him for ten minutes. Then he felt a desire to look in another direction. 
With a very great effort, he moved his head slowly to the left. Then his eyes grew wider and his breath stopped. His feet in their torn shoes at the ends of his short legs moved about on the ground. For the old gentleman was coming across Fourth Avenue toward Stuffy's seat. Every Thanksgiving for nine years the old gentleman had come there to find Stuffy Pete on his seat. That was a thing that the old gentleman was trying to make into a tradition. Every Thanksgiving day for nine years he had found Stuffy there. Then he had led Stuffy to a restaurant and watched him eat a big dinner. They do these things more easily in old countries like England. They do them without thinking about them. But in this young country we must think about them. In order to build a tradition, we must do the same thing again and again for a long time. The old gentleman loved his country. He believed he was helping to build a great American tradition. And he had been doing very well. Nine years is a long time here. The old gentleman moved straight and proud toward the tradition that he was building. Truly, feeding Stuffy Pete once a year was not a very important tradition. There are greater and more important traditions in England. But it was a beginning. It proved that a tradition was at least possible in America. The old gentleman was thin and tall and sixty. He was dressed all in black. He wore eyeglasses. His hair was whiter and thinner than it had been last year. His legs did not seem as strong as they had seemed the year before. As this kind old gentleman came toward him, Stuffy began to shake and his breath was shorter. He wished he could fly away but he could not move from his seat. "'Good morning,' said the old gentleman. "'I am glad to see that the troubles of another year have not hurt you. "'You continue to move in health about the beautiful world. "'For that blessing you and I can give thanks on this day of thanksgiving. "'If you will come with me, my man, I will give you a dinner that will surely make your body feel as thankful as your mind.' "'That is what the old gentleman said every time, every Thanksgiving day, for nine years. "'The words themselves were almost a tradition. "'Always before they had been music in Stuffy's ear, but now... He looked up at the old gentleman's face with tears of suffering in his eyes. The snow turned quickly to water when it fell upon his hot face. But the old gentleman was shaking with the cold. He turned away with his back to the wind, and he did not see Stuffy's eyes. Stuffy had always wondered why the old gentleman seemed sad as he spoke. He did not know that it was because the old gentleman was wishing that he had a son. A son would come there after he himself was gone. A son would stand proud and strong before Stuffy and say, In remembrance of my father, then it would really be a tradition. But the old gentleman had no family. He lived in a room in one of the old houses near the park. In the winter he grew a few flowers there. In the spring he walked on Fifth Avenue. In the summer he lived in a farmhouse in the hills outside New York. And he talked of a strange bug he hoped some day to find. In the fall season he gave Stuffy a dinner. These were the things that filled the old gentleman's life. Stuffy Pete looked up at him for half a minute, helpless and very sorry for himself. The old gentleman's eyes were bright with the giving pleasure. His face was getting older every year, but his clothes were very clean and fresh. 
and then Stuffy made a strange noise. He was trying to speak, as the old gentleman had heard the noise nine times before. He understood it. He knew that Stuffy was accepting. Thank you. I'm very hungry. Stuffy was very full. But he understood that he was part of a tradition. His desire for food on Thanksgiving Day was not his own. It belonged to this kind old gentleman. True, America is free, but there are some things that must be done. The old gentleman led Stuffy to the restaurant and to the same table where they had always gone. They were known there. Here comes that old man, said a waiter. It buys the old no good fella a dinner every Thanksgiving. The old gentleman sat at the table watching. The waiters brought food and more food. And Stuffy began to eat. No great and famous soldier ever battled more strongly against an enemy. The turkey and all the other food were gone almost as quickly as they appeared. Stuffy saw the look of happiness on the old gentleman's face. He continued to eat in order to keep it there. In an hour, the battle was finished. Thank you, Stuffy said. Thank you for my Thanksgiving dinner. Then he stood up heavily and started to go to the wrong door. A waiter turned him in the right direction. The old gentleman carefully counted out one dollar and thirty cents and left fifteen cents more for the waiter. They said goodbye, as they did each year, at the door. The old gentleman went south, and Stuffy went north. Stuffy went around the first corner and stood for one minute. Then he fell. There he was found. He was picked up and taken to a hospital. They put him on a bed and began to try to discover what strange sickness had made him fall. And an hour later, the old gentleman was brought to the same hospital. And they put him on another bed and began to try to discover what his sickness could be. After a little time, one of the doctors met another doctor. And they talked. That nice old gentleman over there, he said, do you know what's wrong with him? He's almost dead for the need of food. A very proud old man, I think. He told me he has had nothing to eat for three days.